Hi everyone, I hope that you are managing to stay well and warm wherever you are. It's pretty cold uh, up on the hill today, but it's good still to be able to share this message with you. Now there's a story in the Gospels uh, that I've always thought of as a bit of a, a strange story. It's full of drama. It's a kind of a, a made-for-Netflix type of story. It's the story of how Jesus heals a demon-possessed man. Jesus and his disciples go across the the Lake of Galilee and they get to the other side and when Jesus steps ashore a man comes to Jesus who has been possessed by demons for many years and the story tells us that he hasn't worn clothes for a long time he's naked that he lives out amongst the tombs and that the community have tried to to literally keep him chained down but he regularly breaks his chains and goes off to be on his own uh, in his home amongst the graves and when this man comes to jesus the demons in him start crying out to jesus uh, asking what do you want with us uh, and begging not to be sent into the abyss and jesus asks the man he says what is your name and the man says my name is legion because there are so many demons and uh, it's this amazing story of how Jesus then sends the demons into a herd of pigs who happen to be feeding nearby, and the pigs go completely mad, and they rush off down the hill and are drowned uh, in the lake. And obviously the people who are watching the pigs are concerned by everything that they're seeing, so they go into town to tell the people what they've seen, and everyone from the town comes and they find this man who they've always known to be wild and crazy. Uh, they find him clothed and in his right mind, sitting at the feet of Jesus. And these people are now completely freaked out by what they've seen. And so they ask Jesus to leave. They say, Jesus, you can't stay here. And as Jesus is getting in the boat to go, the man, obviously now uh, healed and in his right mind, wants to go with Jesus. And he says, please let me go with you. But Jesus sends this man back to his community saying, go and tell others what God has done for you. It's a, a story full of, full of drama. It definitely sounds like it was made for TV in fact, sometimes it can be uh, so dramatic that we might think, well, what on earth does this story have to say to my reality? It can sometimes feel so far away from our own experience that we could think, well, what could this passage possibly say to me today? And now we know that uh, mental health is a real struggle, uh, but we might feel like, you know, wandering naked around a graveyard is not really where we are at the moment. So, so how can we identify with this man? But Perhaps we can identify with the man in, in other ways. Maybe, maybe you know what it feels like to be rejected. Maybe you know what it feels like to live outside of the circle. For whatever reason, this man was in no way acceptable company. And maybe you know what it feels like to be left out. Now, you may not have a legion of demons, but maybe you know what it feels like to be so completely overwhelmed by your problems that you don't actually know where to start or how to name them. And I know this man, when he thought about his life and the plans he had for his life, I'm pretty sure that this was not what he had planned for how his life was going to work out. So maybe you can relate that sometimes our lives get derailed so properly and so quickly, they just don't go to plan. Or maybe like the man you feel chained, chained to something or by something so we may not share his literal experience but in terms of the human condition there is a lot here to which we can relate and so we ask the question well what does jesus do what does jesus do how does jesus respond to this man and all that he's got going on with him well the first thing we see in our passage is that jesus comes to find him Jesus crosses the lake to where he is. Jesus doesn't wait for the man to pull himself together, to get his issues sorted out, to come and to find Jesus. Jesus crosses the lake to him, naked, lost, and alone. It doesn't matter. That is the nature of grace. Grace always comes to find us. Grace goes looking for lost sheep, for lost people. Jesus goes to him. And in the same way, Jesus will always come looking for us. That is the nature of grace. That is what God does. God looks relentlessly for you and for me, searching us out. Because we belong to God, God does not stop looking for that which belongs to him. God says, I'm coming looking for you. Don't wait till you've got everything figured out. Don't think that you have to come searching for me. I see you. I love you. Grace comes looking for you. 
The second thing that Jesus does is he asks the man his name. What is your name? Jesus asks not because he doesn't know who he is, but because he knows that part of this man's journey of healing is remembering who he is, recovering his humanity, recovering his identity, that he is more than just his condition or his problems or his illness. He is a known and loved child of God. Is Jesus asking your name? Not because Jesus doesn't know who you are, but because part of our journey of healing is also figuring out who we are and how we exist in the world. The invitation from God is not just to find ourselves, but to find our identity as known and loved children of God. Jesus comes looking, Jesus asks our name, and then Jesus sends us back. Jesus sent that man back into the world, not because Jesus didn't want him with him, but because that man had a purpose and Jesus knew it. That the healing of that man was about more than just his own story. It was for more than just his sake, but there was a greater good involved as well that that man got to be a part of. His life could show others what God can and will do. So Jesus sends him back. We also have a purpose. And God at work in our lives is not just for our sake, not just for our bubble, but so that others can know the goodness of God. And the way that we live out our simple daily lives can be a witness to others of all that God is waiting to do in their lives too. It doesn't always have to be spectacular or dramatic, but the way we live our lives has a purpose for a good greater than just us. Jesus comes to find us. Jesus asks our name. Jesus sends us back. May you hear the invitation today, wherever you find yourself. Amen.